Hello, hello. There is another episode for your debating listening pleasure. Is that actually proper English? I don't know. Sebastian, good to see you. As long as it's pleasurable, it's gets good to see, enjoy, hear, touch. Let's not get into that. It's already weird. Okay, move on. <laughs> <laughs> Within five seconds of opening this this episode, oh my god! Every time we we manage to, to to screw the opening. Yeah, I mean, it has been a while. We are a bit rusty. You've been out. I've been out. It took a while, so we also stretched the release cycle a little bit. Uh, listeners may have noticed. Uh, we are back in all our debating glory. And in full swing. Yeah, full swing. And today we have a topic that's pulled straight off current news, as we never do, right? <laughs> and we absolutely never do. We talk about the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, and how one is stronger than the other. Yeah, Marvel versus DC and all of that. Uh, but today is other something else. Today is something that you could... Other powers. Yeah. Other superpowers. Other superpowers. Yeah, to be, today is about a battle, actually, that uh, we see unfold. With fight. An, fight, yeah, with an increasing level of uh, rhetoric on both sides. And uh, uh, we had an argument over trade wars. I would argue the trade war is actually bigger than we witness already. So you can look at the numbers without really noticing what the true cost of this whole thing is. And we talk, of course, about the trade war uh, between US and China. And a specific piece of the puzzle that um, looked interesting to us, which is, and now I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's called Huawei. Is that right? Huawei. Huawei. Yes. Huawei. Is it Huawei. Oh. Huawei. Huawei. What is it? The uh, right pronunciation. You're the one traveling Asia all the time. Well, China's not in my scope, so they say Huawei. I say Huawei, but maybe Huawei. it's wrong. Anyway, we, uh, maybe our listeners care to tell us if you, dear listener, know how to pronounce it properly. We are we are happy to take your your voice message anytime. Anyway, it's about Huawei, who, as most of you probably know, has been banned in the U.S. It, it was put on a blacklist by the Trump administration, and that resulted in a number of follow-up actions. For instance, our company, Google, ceased um, partnership with Huawei and stopped um, licensing Android to them. There are other companies like Microsoft, for instance, took out uh, Huawei devices from their stores. And uh, um, the U.S. is building up significant pressure to their allies to follow suit and also block um, Huawei from entering their markets or, or having uh, trade relationships uh, that involve Huawei products. And that is what we took as uh, inspiration for today's debate, which is Huawei's ban is purely political and not based on facts. And to remind our listeners, Huawei is one of the largest uh, manufacturers of smartphones uh, globally. So it's not a small player, it's a major player, but also in the networking equipment. So yes. the telecom towers and possible 5G network that is being built around the planet. I read it's actually the only company really capable of uh, putting out a significant fleet of 5G devices and build a 5G infrastructure at this moment. So it's actually, if you really if you really mean it and you really want to build up a 5G network, there is a hard, you will have a hard time not to buy Huawei products right now. Yeah, that's so true. It's a big deal. It's so it's a big, a big deal. deal. And it does look very much to a lot of people as if the ban was politically motivated. The CFO of the company, who turns out to also be the daughter of the CEO founder, uh, was uh, taken in custody in Canada uh, for some of the sanctions, uh, the, the trade sanctions of the US against Iran that may or may not have been respected by Huawei. Uh, and this has escalated and being integrated into this massive trade war w between yeah. the US and China. And there have so been does... reports of there have been reports of corporate espionage that also played out. Yeah. So so it, it does seem that there's there's facts on one side, but it also seems that it could be very much political. So today we're debating about this. You know, does it is it really just a political thing and, and not based on facts or not? And uh 
Uh, we randomly assign sides. As usual, I will be against the motion. I will try to claim that Huawei's ban is actually based on facts, and I'll start the debate. So right. if, if I'm ready, I'm ready. Uh, I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll get started. Thank God I'm not ready yet. I have to wait another two minutes. <laughs> oh, great. All right. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues against the motion. So to kick things off, I want to be very fair here. I don't know the fact for real, for sure. Right? I, I don't have access to the files and everything, but I will try to portray a situation in which I think there's enough elements by with, with which we can conclude it is indeed not a political explanation to why Huawei should be banned. So one aspect that was played out was this is a could have been a reason for Trump to change the trade deficit. China's uh, has been... Uh, importing a lot of or exporting a lot of goods to the US. And uh, it doesn't make Trump very happy. It feels that there's an imbalance. But the decline, which has been observed of all these imports from China, has actually been offset by an increased import from other countries. So overall, the trade deficit in the US has remained largely unchanged. So for all those who say, oh, it's because Trump wants to you know, do something about the trade deficit and he's targeting China for political reasons and the trade deficit actually doesn't change anything. So we'd be wrong to assume that this is a political move purely to change the trade game. There's, an, there's another aspect which is completely different. And that's if you look at the company itself, the founder of the company, Zheng Fei, is actually a former engineer of the Chinese army. Now, I guess most people know, uh, or most people would accept today that China is not a democracy. And it's very difficult in China for foreign companies, any foreign company, any foreign big company to do business in China. American companies, French companies are no exception. And Chinese officials have much bigger incentives in controlling Chinese companies, even secretly, because their political future is at stake. So all these Chinese companies which go abroad are unfortunately most likely connected to Chinese party officials. My thesis is that the Chinese state is rigging the game in China because they can control it and make it and they make it easier for homegrown companies to operate in China. And the reason why it's important to highlight this is because it shows again and again the extent to which the communist regime is involved into its Chinese big companies. There are also legitimate fears that Huawei technology could help the Chinese state to spy on other countries. It's not just the US that says that, by the way. It's also countries like the United Kingdom or Australia. So there's a number of reasons from this trade uh, war that is going on that is actually debunked by the fact that the trade deficit is the same in the US if you look at the overall trade with other countries. And the aspect that China is notoriously trying to spy on other countries and is completely embedded between the political regime and its, and its big companies. So that's why there's enough facts that go in the direction that Huawei's ban is not motivated by purely political reasons. <laughs> Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. Under the pretense that China is misusing its market power through government-controlled companies, you made that argument right now, U.S. arm wrestles the entire West into a trade war most nations do not want to participate in. Oh, sweet, sweet irony. Who is demonstrating control over their companies and economical powers, I ask? So I hear a lot of podcasts, as you know, I hear a lot of political podcasts, especially out of the US. They all repeat that thing that you also gave us. Oh, it's a security risk is who or why is controlling that big a chunk of the networking infrastructure. They could spy on us. They could listen into our communication. I wonder what other big nation on this planet is has been proven to spy on everyone around the the rest of the world, but that's beyond the point. Let's just stick to could Huawei actually listen in on our communication and control our infrastructure? And that is an argument that does not hold much water if you look at it from a tech-savvy angle. Why? Well, Huawei selling infrastructure to us is the equivalent of a company producing telephone wiring and transformer switches and so on. We're not claiming that they can turn off our power grid, can we? Just because they sold us the cabling and the wiring and the transformers. And the same is true for Huawei. Uh, infrastructure that in the internet 
yes, it's transporting our data, but data is to more than 75% these days encrypted. So unless Huawei has the encryption keys, they cannot just listen in because it passes their infrastructure. Secondly, in big infrastructures like cable companies, like telephone companies, it's common practice that Huawei or any other manufacturer of said infrastructure element actually offer the source code before they install it. So if you assume there is a backdoor, if you assume it's a security risk, if you assume China has control over it, how about just look into the code then, for heaven's sake? And this is, by the way, exactly the reason why there are several com uh, countries like France or uh, Germany that are more skeptical about this, because they actually looked into the source code and didn't find any backdoors. Thirdly, it assumes that Huawei is the only provider of said infrastructure, and that's also rarely the case. Networking infrastructure is a hybrid system in general. There are many, many pieces that have to come together, and just Huawei wouldn't be as powerful enough. Now, this is just to debunk one of the things that we keep hearing. I would will, will give more arguments in my second s segment. So, no, it is a political play. It's a trade war thing. It's not based on facts, and we are sold on false pretenses. <laughs> And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. I'll focus on four aspects, two of which you, you went at length into. The first aspect is to understand to what extent countries are controlling companies. Now, let's look at the US and Europe and what's happening currently. And again, this is my thesis. If you hear Elizabeth Warren, who's one of the Democratic candidates for presidency next year in the US, if you look at what the EU Commission has done or is doing uh, in, in Europe, these institutions or people are asking for dismantling companies like Facebook, like Google, like Amazon, or at least regulating them fiercely. Now, it's companies which are homegrown in these geographies. And if you look at China, the only time when you have big companies being possibly dismantled, it's not for antitrust, it's for so-called corruption, which most likely, at least the way I understand it, is because the C-level executives or the CEO is not falling in line with party, communist party officials. And I think we're, this is the picture I'm painting, which I, this, I really believe into, and where we're possibly preventing companies which are coming from the US or Europe to compete effectively internationally because of our strict regulation. I'm not saying we should not have this regulation, but we have this imbalance with these Chinese companies, which don't seem to be limited in any way by the Chinese uh, party officials, as long as you comply with the political program. So I think there's this, this strong disconnect between these two spheres uh, on the planet. The second aspect is, yes, most certainly there are spies in every company. There's spies probably at Google, probably at Facebook, probably at Huawei, uh, probably spies from different countries. Uh, the thing is, I do think Chinese officials have a much bigger incentive, much bigger interest in sending spies and having a way to control companies, whether it's through tech, through spies being disguised as employees or other mechanisms because their political future, as I said before, is at stake, right? It's not the case in the US or Europe. You have elections, free elections, and you have opposition parties which come into power fairly regularly, right? This is happening. Uh, the third aspect, which you mentioned is, well, tech-wise, you would say it's difficult or not possible because there's encryption, uh, encryption among other things, that would make it very difficult to hack into the networking uh, equipment. But here's the thing, and maybe this is naive, but I, and I don't hold all the facts, as I said, but I think the systems have become too complex in general when we talk about engineering, and I'm an engineer, and uh, likewise for yourself. Systems have become too complex for any one, any single individual to comprehend uh, the entire spectrum of the system. And by that, I mean, look at what's happened. And I know it's completely unrelated, but it's, too, it's an analogy here. Look at Boeing and the problem with the MCAS system, right? It seems crazy that they've been using only one sensor for the angle of attack to decide on such drastic changes in the orientation of the plane. Now, if it was so simple, it would have struck any engineer that they this was a mistake to hold uh, the plane uh, liable on just one point of failure. So my point here is, well, we don't really know what chip is actually changed for what purposes, if the encryption key is public or private or whatever is happening. My fourth point, and I'll just finish off very quickly with this, it's not just buying, by the way. Uh, there's at least 23 indictment counts which were unsealed by the Justice Department, which was around uh, intellectual property, obstruction of justice, fraud related to evasion of uh, US sanctions against Iran. So when there is smoke, there is fire. 
And what I'm trying to show here, there's so many elements from spying to IP theft to the technical aspect, which is so complex for anyone to understand on their own, that I think there is more than that meets the eye. Next up, Dirk. Let's hear it. You gave me now a whole list of potential reasons to crack down on Huawei. Most of these reasons would work for pretty much any big Chinese company. What about Lenovo? What about DJI? How about we just ban all Chinese companies because they are potentially government controlled? The thing is, if you really believe in our Western market philosophy and the US is the country where uh, you could argue market forces rule the freest, yeah, then the market should sort it out and everything that's illegal just crack down on it. If they are buying on us, well, as I said, I get, uh, I wonder what other country has been caught multiple times on spying on, on, on foreign countries. I mean, they listened into conversations of Angela Merkel, for heaven's sake. So this is not an argument. This is a fact. Every nation spies on every other nation. That's not a no good enough reason to crack down on companies. Huawei is building pretty good hardware, which is why they sell so damn much of it. The security risk, you must said it yourself, systems are complicated. Actually, the fact that systems are complicated is also producing safety for us because it's damn hard to kill off a system that's built as complex and complicated as modern networking infrastructure by an organized uh, state action as suggested uh, on a system that's based on Huawei infrastructure because it's never just Huawei that has to work in these infrastructures. There is Cisco hardware, there is Intel hardware, there are so many things that have to work together, which is exactly why these companies take a really, really close look at the hardware and the software and have failover systems. So this is, this is about scaring everyone by an argument that only non-technicians really follow through with. With. That that just see, oh, there is so much of Huawei, it's Chinese, I don't know what it does, but somebody who seemed to know what they are talking about tell me that's dangerous. That's not really holding much water, as I said. For me, there is another reason, and I briefly line that out, and that's why I say it's purely political. There are two things. First off, Trump wants to bully China into a change of rule. He does not want a free market. He doesn't believe in free trade. He wants deals. And he wants to demonstrate the US power to force rules on everybody else on this planet, which is why this Huawei ban is not only a ban the US is producing, actually the US by extension threatens to ban other companies from other countries if they do business with Huawei. So basically the US tries to write the rules for Germany, France, Switzerland, whatever. Every country that wants to do business in the US has to pay close attention to things like the ban on Huawei. I would say that goes too far and I would say that's a pure political play. Why is he doing that? One, he's trying to bully China into accepting rules. But the second one is actually the more interesting one, I believe. Trump is on record telling everyone that he does not believe in the modern globalist society, that he wants to separate the nations from each other, that he wants to make sure that, that nations are fighting for themselves and that he believes competition is the fuel that should, uh, should push that. Now look at what happens with Huawei. Look at how he uses companies like Google, Microsoft and such to enforce rules on the world. I think the logical reaction, if you Europe, Russia, China, what have you, will be that everybody starts building their own stuff infrastructure systems now. So Trump is trying to kill off globalism. That's what he is trying to do here. And this is, again, a political play. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. So Trump launched his re-election campaign yesterday, uh, as of this day of recording, and he emphasized the same themes as 2016 to get him re-elected. In these themes, none of them involve deals. The three themes which come back is illegal immigration, fake news, and crooked Democrats. He does not need more deals or China or what have you. But in fact, from a trade perspective, even signing a deal with any country doesn't change anything for the trade deficit in, in the US. So let's talk about China. China wants to rule the world. In fact, Huawei's uh, CEO said the, that very thing. He said, "Oh, the U.S. is scared that Huawei is gonna is gonna rule the world or dominate the world." The problem is, China 
in many instances, is not playing fair. Now, many countries are not playing fair either. But when it comes to China, considering this, the scale, the scope, the size of China and its companies, we're talking about another order of magnitude. And this has massive effects. If I'm not mistaken, a third of the top, uh, the top 30 tech companies are Chinese um, already. And China makes it impossible. This is just an illustration for foreign companies to operate in China. So when you have all these ad additional elements of IP theft and spying or potential spying, uh, it just adds too much at some point where you're taking a, such a huge risk when you have this other e economy, China, which has become so powerful now that it be does become a risk to our own economies, but not just economies, just to everything else, surveillance and democracies, as we have seen elections, have been meddled into by other powers, maybe not China, but who knows what's next. So I think there's enough facts or elements of facts that makes Huawei's band completely legitimate. Derek. I come back to something you said in the beginning. You said Huawei is one of the world's largest smartphone manufacturer. Fun fact. Huawei is not selling smartphones in the US, for instance. If that would be about the US trying to protect their own economy, their employees, what have you, they could have just made selling Huawei goods on US soil illegal. Instead, the Trump, uh, the Trump administration demonstrates that they have the power to force everyone who is doing business in the US to ban and crack down on Huawei. That is a demonstration of power that has nothing to do with fair rules. And when you talk about China not playing fair, what is the US doing right now? Is that playing fair? Actually, the world trade system is based on one principle, that rules that everybody agrees on in exchange with each other stay the rules that we all agreed on. And right now, it feels like US is just changing the rules within the game because they can. And they demonstrate that they can force their companies, companies like Google, Microsoft, and so on, to be weapons in that trade war. That's political tooling. And that's all there is to say. All right, interesting. Uh, what's your opinion? I'm pretty close to the side I defend. So I, I do okay. think this, this whole game is ridiculous and the arguments that are being sold are really bad arguments if you look close enough to them. I, I tend to agree. Maybe, maybe there is stuff that you can criticize about Huawei, then Huawei should be um, brought to court and and paste deep fines. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're on the I, same side? I, I, I am on the same side. I... Despite everything else, I think no one's playing fair anyway. And it's a very gray zone to say, oh, that is just too much. And this is okay. <laughs> I think everyone's just trying to find a way to get away with any kind of crap. Yeah. Um, all the time, whether it's the, the official spying agencies or other companies or what have you. So I, yeah, it does appear as a, as a political thing. I mean, in any case, you know, what, You, you, you have to look even at the Iran thing, right? Europe is not at all as adamant as the US to block trade with Iran. We're totally cool with it. We don't consider Iran to be a terrorist country or supporting terrorism. Yeah. But because, you know, the, the a lot of the trade is going in US dollars, our companies in Europe cannot do any trade because otherwise they get sanctioned. Um, so... Yeah, even even that example of Iran is just illustrative that there is already a complete different analysis between, I mean, so-called democracies between the EU and and the US. So I would extend that to China. So yeah, I I struggle to believe that this is nothing else but just a way to maybe mm. not for negotiating a deal. I don't know, but just to show who's the strong man and I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't exactly know what would be the entire political re repercussions of that. So that was it. That was today's debate. We kind of ended on the same side this time. Maybe this is the one, the one time where you, where you always came. Hey, we should ma mark the calendar. If at, at the end we say, oh yeah, you know what, you convinced me. Um, but I, I feel like I didn't need to do much convincing in this case. But 
maybe we didn't convince our listeners or you or me didn't convince so it's for our listeners to tell us what they think were the better arguments that we nevertheless tried to make do you feel like Huawei's ban is a political play or do you think it's based on facts let us know in the voting that you leave on our website to debate.eu thumbs up if you think it was a purely political game like I was arguing for thumbs down if you think hey actually it's based on facts and Sebastian was right and if you have facts or additional details that we didn't talk about do share with us um, curious to know but also bear into account take into account the fact that are we holding every company to the same standards right? is IP theft enough to ban an entire company from operating uh, or is it as you mentioned uh, should it be dragged into court and pay a, a fine as a result because of IP theft right so let's not have double standards when it comes to applying laws and with these wise words we close the debate today <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank thanks you thanks Sebastian thank bye you, bye